Hi, my name is Jeremy Shulman. I go by Network Automaniac on Twitter. And today I'm going to do a code walkthrough on how this function, uh, group by VLAN range, uh, works. And the, what, this, what this function does is it takes a list of numbers that are integers, which in, in our application would be a list of VLAN IDs, and returns back a comma separated uh, list of string, you know, comma a string that is a comma separated list of numbers or ranges. And the use case here is where a network engineer would have to configure uh, a VLAN trunk interface, and they have to specify the VLANs uh, in a in a comma separated list kind of notation. So this solution uh, is really uh, implemented by using a, a function called group by and enumerate. So I'm going to just, you know, this is this is what we're going to get to, but I'm going to start from a clean sheet of paper and re-implement this function step by step so you can see each of the techniques uh, that are used in order to implement the solution. So let's start from a blank sheet of paper. I am going to open up a new project. We'll call this uh, VLAN range string and uh, create the project. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is uh, create a new Python file. We'll just call this VLAN range string. And we are going to first cover some basics before we get into the implementation of that function. The first um, thing that we need to understand is how does, I'll make this a little bit bigger. This, you know, how does enumerate work? All right. So if I have a list of numbers, for example, uh, 10, 11, 12, 20, 21, 22, and 50, this is a list of numbers. And uh, if I were to um, enumerate these numbers, uh, what does that give me? You know, for each in enumerate, print each. Uh, so enumerate is going to give you a tuple value uh, where the first item in that tuple is the index in the list. So that would be like 0, 1, 2, etc. And then the uh, second part of the tuple is the actual value. So we can demonstrate that uh, by doing this. Uh, if name is equal to main. I'll just write this as a short little Python program. And PyCharm gives me this really nice uh, run. Uh, and I can even stick a breakpoint here. And uh, if I wanted to uh, run with a debug, you know, we can see, you know, here we have numbers. And if I wanted to then uh, continue, You can see that um, I've got uh, 10. And if I continue again, I get 1 and 11. That's the next item in that iteration. 2 and 12, 3 and 20, et cetera, et cetera. So I can take this breakpoint out and just let it run. So you can see that uh, the, the return value from enumerate is this tuple the index and its value. Okay, now why is that important? Well, the way group by works is it, it, it wants to uh, give you groups of values that share the same key, right? So we need to create a key for each of these items. And the way that solution does that is it takes the index and it subtracts the value. And so if I did each, and then I said uh, each zero minus each one. So this is the index and this is the value, and I just ran this again. We can see that we have groups. You know, this group identifier is these values, and you can see that there are two groups, or actually three groups, negative 10, 17, and 44, because when you take the index and its value, and they both increment, you know, together, they're consecutive, they're going to produce the same, you know, math. So this is the, this is the function that we're going to use to group by to create groups. 
Now, the other thing that's important is that this is a sorted list. So that's very, very important. When you use the group by function, you must use a sorted list. So it knows you know, when these group break patterns happen. So let's uh, use group by now. So I could say for a group ID comma members in, and we're gonna need to uh, from iter tools, oops, from iter tools import by. We're gonna say uh, group by, and so group by takes two parameters. One is the th the the thing that we're going to look at. You know, this is this, these values, and then the key function that is going to produce uh, the group, the group ID. We could say group ID. And we could function called item, and we could say return you know item zero minus item one, and then our key is group ID, for example. Now, if we printed out uh, group ID and members, just to you know, print it out on the console, what do we get? Well, we get, you know, we can see that here's our group ID value, negative 10, negative 17, and 44, as, as we had before. But then this members, this is, an, this is a, a, what is this? This is actually an iterable itself. So these are the members that are in that group and so if we change this to say, well, turn that, that, that iterable into a, you know, a concrete list. Well, then let's run this again. And now you can see that in negative 10, I have the elements, you know, the, the first one, the second one, the third one. Negative 17 has, you know, these, these elements. And negative 40 has this last value. Okay. So now we can see that uh, group by will give us you know, these groups and then these are essentially our ranges, you know, 10, 11, 12, 20 to 22, and then this last value. So what we could do as a, as a, simple, uh, as a simple matter, we could say um, you know, members is a list of members because really we want the first and the last. So we could say first and last is equal, you know, members zero and members uh, negative one, right? And then we could do first and last, just to print this out. Oops. Run this. You know, and now we can see that negative 10 has the first value of, of 10 and the last value of 12. Negative 17 has the first value of 20 and 22. And, and negative 44, you know, has only really one value. It's the same value. It just happens to be first and last. So, you know, just from this, what we, what we could do is we really don't care about the, the index. Really what we care about is just the value. So we could say we just want the zeroth position here. And now we can see that, you know, these two things, you know, this is a range. We can see this is a range. This really isn't a range. It's the same value. So. Now what we could do is we could start, you know, creating our range strings, right? So we could say um, we, we need to create uh, values. We need to store these range strings into a list so that we can return a common separated uh, string, right? Well, we're not returning anything. We're just going to print it. Uh, comma join values. Okay. So we need to build up this list. So we could say, you know, if first uh, is equal to last, then there's really, that's a singleton value. So we could say, you know, values append. And since these are numbers, we want them as strings, we would convert that to first. And then we could say, uh, otherwise, uh, values append. And in this case, we want to say, uh, we could do it this way, uh, first dash last. Okay, so there's only one value, it's just by itself, and if there is a first and a last, then we can make it a, a dash. And we could run that. And now you can see we've got these ranges, you know, 10 to 12, 20 to 22, and 50. You know, that's, a, that's basically the basic principles behind, you know, this technique. Now, 
you know, you can kind of do some other optimizations. For example, let's say you had 30 and 31 and you and if you run this, you know, do you really want to have a dash here or would you want to have a comma? Well, that's kind of a preference. I mean, I don't think a, a switch configuration really cares, but you know, may, maybe you do. So you could say, well, uh, maybe I want to say, uh, I want to use a comma uh, if the length of uh, members is equal to two, otherwise I want to use a dash. And I'll say my separator is equal to this. And then rather than hard coding the separator, I could just you know put a separator here and then click run again. And now you can see this, this happens to be a comma because, you know, uh, I didn't want to put a dash if you have just two consecutive numbers. So that's, that's kind of the principle of how, you know, this, this technique works. Um, there's a few other optimizations you can do, uh, but this is the general principle. And so without going you know, too, too nerdy into some more complicated um, optimizations, I'll just leave it at this. And if you have any questions, please post them in the comment section. I uh, hope you enjoyed and uh, look forward to hearing from you. Thanks.